Hello and welcome back to Postcards from a Wet Rock. Uh, this is our European comic show. I'm your host, Cthulhu. Um, today we are doing a Belgian book, The Yellow M by Edgar P. Jacobs. And it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, so I'll tell you about it. All right, well, this is first serialised in Tintin magazine. Uh, it started on the 6th of August 1953 and ran till the 3rd of November 1954 significant dates because this is set in London um, and it starts in the Tower of London with the theft of the crown jewels bearing in mind this story starts uh, a couple of months after Queen Elizabeth II's coronation on uh, 2nd of June 1953 so clearly an inspiration clearly current topical it's big event then um, we've just had another coronation I'm not sure it it will have the same historical impact, but, you know, times change. Obviously entirely written and illustrated by Edgar P. Jacobs, as were all the books that were done during his lifetime. Uh, the book itself came out in 1956, a couple of years after the run was finished. Um, it was a, a translation, an English translation first appeared in 1988. Um, uh, but the version I'm reading was is a cine book version, which was released in 2007. Um, that was translated by Clarence E. Holland. With this book, the kind of early um, wordiness of the exposition is kind of overdone. I've mentioned in the other two episodes. Um, it's kind of it's always it's being sorted out in this book. It's not really. An issue. There's a lot of expedition when you get to the, like the end of the second act, beginning of the third act, um, for obvious reasons. It kind of needs to be there, but the rest is it's kind of quite smooth sailing. There's a little bit at the beginning, but it's getting his word count down to a more manageable level for the reader, which is uh, which is great. This is a very cinematic book, um, both in terms of the writing, which is is very pulp fiction, radio serial, cinema serial. Um, the shadow in particular, um, you'll recognise. But there is German expressionism in here and film noir, the likes of Fritz Lang. In fact, uh, Fritz Lang's M was is, is almost, is di almost directly referenced. There's somebody does draw um, an M on the back of Mortimer's coat on a crowded omnibus going through the streets of London. Um, it's very reminiscent of the scene with Peter Lorre having a chalked on his back uh, going through the streets of uh, was it Berlin I, th I think it's Berlin um, anyway that it's it all helps to create this atmosphere it's, it's it's a really great atmosphere when it starts but it doesn't really let up it's very very um, lovingly rendered here it's I mean the pictures are beautiful but um, I mean, they they go through all the tropes. They do the they uh, they do the limehouse docks. They do they go into the sewers. They they are they're in townhouses. They go to the British Library. Um, seen on a train, and there is a spectacular train crash in this. Um, but uh, all those all those um, London uh, landmarks, and I mean they 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 name almost every road they travel down. It starts off with a series of crimes that they. they scale up in, in um, daring and ambition um, and kind of moves into um, people being kidnapped, uh, scientists, doctors, uh, the editor of the Daily Mail and a uh, famous judge, um, uh, the director of the British Medical Association. So, um, the, this this is it's just a very good story. Very, very good story. This occurred to me it's only, what, 10 years before um, the Ipocrest file? Maybe a bit more. But uh, kidnap scientists in London. So there's a link there. Um, talking of links to other things, um, this scientist-soldier combination we get here is, is very soon to be represented by... Professor Quatermass and Colonel Breen in Quatermass and the Pit a few years later by um, John Pertwee's doctor and um, Lethbridge Stewart. Uh, we also see shades of it with uh, Avon and Blake in Blake 7. And 
Um, it's even in even in modern day series like Fringe, where we get scientists working with the FBI. It's 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 um, it's a combination that still works well today. And many of my favourite things have, have revolved around this combination of uh, a man of action and a man of learning. Uh, it works really well. It gives you a lot of scope in a story. Also, on the subject of science, there's a lot of uh, technology in this book. Um, some of it, uh, like radio and radar and TV, is like it's like new in Britain, relatively. Maybe not so much radio, but TV certainly. It was in fact the coronation of the Queen that um, caused a boom in people getting TV sets. Um, so television is used in this radio, uh, like two-way radio. Like um, they make a big deal about how he, um, at one point Blake is fitting on a um, a, t uh, a radio so that he can be kept in contact uh, with while he's off on a mission, and make a big deal about how the aerial points down so he can wear it under his coat and how new this is. Um, and other things like hypnotism and electromagnetism that were invented a little while before but um we're going through uh like the state of the art versions of these sciences where um um they're, they're being plundered uh jake they they seem quaint now especially things like tv and radar and things i mean we've become very uh used to them they're so familiar we're complacent about them but they, when this book was written they were they were kind of new technologies so this is an up-to-date science fiction serial if you look at it from that angle there are there is a huge plot hole in this book um which i can't really talk about without giving you spoilers so the only way to do it what i've done i'm going to oh, well i haven't done it yet i'm about to do it but i'm going to now record a load of spoilers and put that as an unlisted video and if you don't mind the spoilers there'll be a link to the unlisted video in the description of this one and you can then click on that so if you've already read it or you don't mind the spoilers um you can come and discuss this huge plot hole i mean it's only gonna be a couple of minutes for the video um but uh, i've got to get this off my chest uh, apparently this cover um it's a very iconic cover and it's it's uh, like i mean europe are way ahead of us in so many ways um uh that that's that's been um uh, that's been a big thing over there um for quite a while um it's it is a wonderful cover anyway um there there was talk of a film of this uh book i mean as far as I'm concerned, it's the best so far, although I haven't reached Time Trap. Um, and, uh, and and anything after that. So basically, I'm basing that on the first sort of seven or eight books, um, which is most of what Edgar P. Jacobs wrote himself uh, soon after. That I think, I'm not sure exactly what... Oh, I'll look it up. Oh, there's a book down here. I don't need to do that, do I? The Edgar P. Jacobs books, I think, I think it's 11 or 12, I'm not sure, um, I think one of these books was finished by somebody else, um, yeah, that's all irrelevant, don't need to know that, do we, had to add a video though. Um, yeah, so this is, this is, it's a slightly longer than usual story, but it doesn't really suffer. It's very pacey. Um, obviously, he's actually contracting his stories. The, the first two stories uh, went through five books, uh, whereas this is just one contained story. And incidentally, that's why I recommend people start with this. And they obviously made this uh, book one. So um, they knew where their bread was buttered. Get people into it. Get them reading this book. Um, and then they can go for the longer ones later. Um, I don't know why Jacob suddenly reduced the length of the stories. Um, I mean, I think the first story took, took three years to tell in the um, comic. It's very possible that he realised that if he released a book every three years, he wouldn't make as much money as if he released one every year, like Herge was doing. Or, well, at a certain point, Herge was doing that. Um, 
Peugeot did slow down a lot later. This is not about him, this is about Jacobs. So they were talking about making films of these. I'm going to have to look at my notes. There was a three minute scene produced by somebody called Irene Silberman, who was uh, the wife of Serge Silberman, who I know nothing about either of these people, but I found that out on Wikipedia, so I'll drop it in. Um, they produced a three minute scene of this book, um, presumably to try and get backers, but nothing happened. Just died a death. I, I don't know when that was. There was a Spanish director, Alex de la Iglesia. Um, he was going to do a version in 2010 starring Hugh Laurie and Kiefer Sutherland as Blake and Mortimer. Or Mortimer and Blake. I'm not sure which way around that would have been. Um, I can see a case for both there. But um, after the announcement that that was uh, in the offing, that was the last I've ever heard of that. There was or has, or is, still is, a an animated version of Blake and Mortimer. There are, there's a lot of, um, they're all on YouTube, actually. I will put a link to this one, if that's on there, but you can just search Blake and Mortimer on YouTube, and you will find the cartoons. Personally, I would rather go and buy the DVD and support the um, publishers and the artists, but, you know, I can understand if there's not a lot of money about so, um get them for free on YouTube um, I mean I'm a nerd I just like things on my shelves you'd never guess would you um, but yeah you can find them on YouTube I'll give you a link just doing everything I can to get you reading Blake and Mortimer you really should it's good for you it's NASA's last appearance in the original run of books um, it's basically taken out um, he, he basically he ran out of function. He wasn't being used. He was. He, he went from a soldier, I think it was a sergeant, um, to a travelling companion, to a butler. Um, getting less and less important as time goes on. And it's, it's just, it's a shame. Because um, when he came into it, he was a good action character. And it was good to see... Um, uh, well, in this country, as an ethnic minority... Um, becoming um, one of the heroes, especially in a book from the 40s and the 50s. But uh, it just didn't get enough um, enough action. So I presume that's why Jacobs left him out. So we won't see NASA anymore after this book. But overall, I absolutely love this book. It's a wonderful piece of storytelling. It, it's, it's beautiful to look at. It's exciting to read. Um, it's just right up my street so I am going to be very biased it's a smoky old London town it's foggy it's it's creepy, it's dark um, it's raining all the time it's just all those all those little tropes that, that you like you know um, I, don't, I mean I love the way they just say oh we're going to Tavistock Square we've got to go down there we're going to Limehouse Spot we're going up Narrow Street oh this is great I, it, it's just, I just love it. Um, I'm a sucker for these, these period things. Um, oh, they weren't period when Jacobs was doing it, I should remember that. It's like when Doyle invested Sherlock Holmes with uh, modern technology that now to us, uh, like telegrams were a modern technology then, and um, to us they seem like antiquated science. But um, you have to remember that these, this is science fiction when it's being written. And it might be history to us now, but it was science fiction in those days. Um, and it still feels like science fiction. When you get to the denouement, it is, it is absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, it's very, very barking mad cinema serial scientist. I, I, I love the ending. And the ending, I won't say any more than that. Uh, we're not even in the spoiler video. But... Um, that's um, that's basically it. I don't really want to tell you anything more about the story, and I think I've given us enough time to look at some of the art that isn't a spoiler. Um, don't forget, you can go and look at the spoiler section by clicking the link in the description, and do do check out the um, animation. It may lead you to actually going out and buying the DVD if it's available on whatever region. I don't even know, but uh, they are on YouTube. Um, 
please release a DVD if there isn't one. Talking of releases, um, I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, the U-Ray or the Rayon U, um, that's that is due out in a in a couple of months um, from Cinebook again. Um, that's got the origins of Blake and Mortimer in it, and I am very much looking forward to doing that. There will be an episode out the instant I get hold of that. There will be no spoilers in it, as with all Blake and Mortimer. Um, there aren't enough of you that out there that are reading it, so I'm not giving you any excuses not to. I want you to go and buy this book. If you don't, I'll be very disappointed in you. Um, I am very soon getting to the point where I will be starting another cine book series while we talk about that and the first book I will be I don't have a blooper reel they all end up in the show Robertsonville Prison the Blue Coats this is this is the first book in the series but there were a lot of shorts and, and stories that wouldn't actually take up a whole book I don't know whether they're going to release an omnibus of those. I hope they are. Um, I might email them and ask them. Um, but they've got up to 16 and there are more to release. So it might be a while. Uh, uh, they're really good. They're about the American Civil War. I've got a friend who um, knows a little bit about the American Civil War because he lives in Richmond um, in America. Virginia, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm basically press ganging him into coming on the show and talking a little bit about that. He's agreed to do it, and I'm not going to let him change his mind. So um, that could be coming soon, or it might be a month. You have to wait and see. Uh, but in the meantime, that's a lot for me for for Blake and Mortimer. Um, I'll be back next week with Asterix, but there will be Judge Dredd on Friday, where we start in The Curse of Earth. Um, got a little guest on that as well, um, going to be popping up on a little uh, insert video. Uh, very old friend, known him for many, many years, can't get rid of him. Uh, you know, what do you do? Might as well make use of him, eh? So, um, I'm going to go now to uh, work on a few things for you, um, and... Thank you very much for watching. Bye.